BCR-generated plasmids can be introduced into bacteria in transformation. Transformation is the process in which bacteria take up foreign DNA. However, this process occurs at slow rates, so certain methods make the process more efficient. DNA and bacterial membranes are negatively charged to tend to repel. Adding divalent cation bridges to charges, making the membranes more sensitive. Heat shocking the bacteria creates pores in the membranes the plasmas are taken up. These bacteria can be placed on agar to grow colonies and increase their populations. Welcome to my presentation on bacterial transformation. I, Morgan Freeman, will be your guide. The process begins with the plasmids and a unique bacteria without a plasmid getting mixed. The bacteria are given a heat shock where it allows some of the plasmid to enter the bacteria. The bacteria is then placed in an antibacterial dish. The plasmid contains an antibiotic resistance gene allowing the bacteria containing them to survive. This is shown with the dish by the colonies that are produced as the surviving bacteria manage to clone themselves. By using this process, we are left with only the bacteria that took up a plasmid. Now we can use the bacterial transformation for either plasmid production on a more complex scale, or we can just use it directly to synthesize proteins. Now we'll have Walter White explain the significance of the plasmid structure. The plasmid structure consists of three important gene sequences, the target gene, promoter, and the antibiotic resistance gene. The target gene contains the information that is wanted and is the main purpose of doing bacterial transformation. What the promoter does is signals the transcription of the target gene, allowing for the production of RNA. Finally, arguably the most important is the antibiotic resistance gene, which allows for it to survive and copy itself, allowing for more samples of the wanted DNA. Once the colonies are created, it is important to check the colonies to make sure that the plasmids contain the wanted plasmid in the correct orientation. Another possibility is the plasmid may not contain the target gene caused by the plasmid closing up before the gene can enter, or it could have gone in but backwards. The backwards placement would mean that the gene will not be able to express the desired protein, making it useless. And that is the process and significance of bacterial transformation. In a lab, not so far away, the world was struck with a virus, coronavirus. But don't fear, PCR came to the rescue. What's PCR, I hear you ask? <laughs> PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. PCR is a technique used to rapidly amplify a specific segment of DNA. This allows for the detection and identification of gene sequences using visual techniques. How is this done, I hear you ask? A sample of DNA is treated with detergent to break open cells and release DNA. The sample along with DNA polymerase, primers and nucleotides are all placed in a reaction tube. The reaction tube is then placed in a PCR thermal cycler. In the first step, the reaction tube is heated to 95 degrees and the DNA separates into two strands. In the next stage, the reaction tube is lowered to around 55 degrees and annealing takes place. This is where the DNA primers attach at the start of the STR repeated sequence. In the last stage, the temperature is raised to around 70 degrees and DNA polymerase attaches. Nucleotides are added, extending the DNA from the primer. After the first cycle ends, the whole process repeats, producing copies in each cycle. The SDR fragments produced can then be separated out by gel electrophoresis. Did you know it takes 32 cycles to amplify a sample of DNA that's not visible to the eye? There are multiple uses of PCR, some of which include forensics and paternity testing. PCR polymerase chain reaction. You may have never heard of it before 2020 if you didn't have an interest in molecular biology. What is it exactly? PCR is a basic technique used to turn the teeny tiny amount of DNA or sometimes RNA extracted from plants, animals, and environments into a larger portion. And the te technical term for this is amplification. 
In brief words, what it does is copying and pasting nucleic acids. But it does not amplify everything. Instead, we usually only amplify a specific sequence of DNA, in other words, a gene, for researching its functions in the cell. Now, what's involved in the process then? First, we start with the ingredients. Free nucleotides, the building blocks of the new strand. DNA polymerase, the enzyme adding nucleotides to the new strand. DNA template, the DNA we're trying to copy from. Primers, they are in pairs. They are very short sequence of DNA that bind complementarily to the DNA template. And DNA polymerase will start adding nucleotides from the positions of the primers. Let me use the metaphor. If we think of it as a construction site, DNA template would be the blueprint. Primers would be the signs telling you where the construction starts and ends. Nucleotides are our raw material, like bricks. DNA polymerase are the workers putting the bricks together. To make the enzyme work, temperature is the key. The whole process relies on a cycle of varying temperatures. To achieve this, we mix our ingredients and put them in an apparatus called thermocycler. Moving on to the procedure of PCR, how is the copy part done? Well, it is based on complementary base pairing. Think about a zipper. When DNA polymerase moves along the template strand, it adds the nucleotides to the primer stand and a new strand is made. The process repeats and you'll get millions of copies of the original DNA. Enzymes are part of the bacterial immune system, and they have the ability to cut DNA at specific base sequence sites. Bacteriophages are viruses that inject their DNA into the bacterium and either take over the machinery of the bacterium to make more virus components or insert their genetic material into the bacterial DNA so that more virus components can be synthesized. Bacteria use restriction enzymes to break down the viral DNA into fragments, which restricts the bacteriophages' replication. Restriction enzymes only break down non-methylated DNA, so bacteria methylate their own DNA to protect it. The restriction enzyme here is moving along the viral DNA, and when it reaches the correct sequence of six bases, it cleaves the DNA. Every time the restriction enzyme encounters the correct base sequence, it will cleave the DNA until the DNA is broken down into fragments and the virus will not be able to replicate. The ends of the DNA fragments are called sticky ends. They are known sequences that can be added to the ends of genes, which allows genes to be inserted into bacterial plasmids. The genes will then be expressed and the proteins made can be extracted for human use. This technology has been used to produce human insulin for patients with diabetes.
tells the secret language we find. It's called the genetic code and it's one of a kind. It tells the story of life in every cell and store. The language of four bases. So let's explore. Is the genetic code a recipe so clear? Degenerate non-overlapping in every being it appears. Four bases hold the key, A, T, C and G. In a non-overlapping way, life's proteins they decree. The degenerate nature of the code to which we subscribe, the 64 codons, 20 amino acids they transcribe. Universal is the same in all that's alive and free, from humans to trees, life shared decree. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine, building blocks of life in a sequence 5 to 3. Start and stop codons guide the way for polymerase. The genetic code, a blueprint for life, big or trace. <laughs>